The DC Metro is the nation's second largest by ridership, used by more than 700,000 passengers a day. Let's turn now to that breaking news from the nation's capital, the announcement of an urgent shutdown of one of the biggest mass transit systems in the country, DC's Metro. The system is closed this morning for critical safety inspections. The Washington's Metro's unprecedented 29-hour shutdown is crippling the morning commute for more than 700,000 daily riders. From University Writing in George Washington University, it's unabridged. I'm Hannah Miner. When Metro first opened in 1976, it was praised. The DC Metro used to be efficient. I say used to. About a year ago, in January of 2015, a tunnel fire broke out. When the Metro workers attempted to contain the fire and the smoke, they made a technical error and activated the wrong fans. One woman was killed. This death did not have to happen, but the maintenance workers were not trained well enough or prepared at all. The escalators of the Metro alone have problems stemming from 1991 when Metro got rid of the private contractors that maintained the system so that Metro could hire and train their own escalator mechanics to work for less money. Since the change of maintenance and the tunnel fire of 2015, the Metro has undergone more fires, shutdowns, and a seemingly endless number of replacements for the electrical works keeping all the trains going. Today, the Metro remains a crucial type of transportation for all DC residents and tourists. DC has become dependent on it. If you followed these stories in the news, you'd understand that the Metro has not received the attention it should. The same people that read about the Metro fires breaking out continue taking the trains weekly because every person thinks that was an accident and will not happen again. They have to think this. This is their only way of getting around. Those accidents are occurring more and more and are causing a greater shock to the nation's capital as they continue to happen. I attempted to interview anyone working the administration of Metro via their administrative office number, but was unable to get anyone to answer my questions. I will gladly share that number. It's 202-962-1234 for anyone who may have better luck speaking with them. I was, however, after a few attempts, finally able to question one of the Metro workers on the ground. A funny story. At first I tried getting his attention by knocking on the glass of the small booth in which he sat, but he refused to speak to me unless I passed the Metro gate using my smart trip card. Once I did pass through, I rounded the corner and walked up to the booth door. With a smile on my face, I told him I was writing a school paper about the lives of Metro workers. Previously, whenever I told anyone working Metro what I was actually writing about, they refused to comment. This man, whom I will call John, unfortunately not his real name, was kind enough to spare me a minute of his time. Can I use your name? Don't, don't use name? Okay, uh, what do you think of the Metro? Metro is a... We got a little hiccups, but... Uh, it get better. As long as we just do our repairs, we should be fine. You think it's going to get a lot better? It's going to get way a lot better. Okay. A whole lot better. Ha has it been bad in the past, do you think? It have been past. It's just, uh, they have been keeping up on as far as, you know, things you should have been doing. But since we got a new GM, we've been doing a lot better than we was. The new GM, general manager, that John mentioned is a man named Paul J. Weidfeld, who was appointed to the position in November of 2015. Metro workers claim to the public that he is going to fix the Metro and set things straight. Yet when someone of the public, like Leah, my roommate, or myself, is questioned about the efficiency of the Metro, they claim it is getting worse. The biggest thing was that there was a fire at McPherson. Um, I think that was actually the day before the shutdown. That's Leah speaking. She is talking about the 24-hour shutdown that occurred on March 16th, so that maintenance could inspect the jumper cables. And I was trying to get to Union Station. We were in an Uber, and it took, like, 50 minutes to get to Union Station. And generally, it takes me, like, 10 by an Uber. Mm -hmm. And that was just because all of the added traffic. And there are so many more people walking everywhere, and it was just a mess. Leah is a student at GW like myself. She is a normal university student that uses the Metro almost every week. Leah states her experiences as unreliable but necessary. Every other person has the same story, but not as many people are seeking to do anything about the issues. In order to get a better perspective on the whole situation, I interviewed Jason Jordan, the director of the Center for Transportation Excellence, a nonprofit organization that has worked with Metro in the past. The 
more difficult local circumstances that Wilmana faces um, is that it does not have um, the same sort of funding resources that some other systems have in terms of uh, a locally dedicated sales tax or property tax, for instance, to provide uh, funding. I certainly know this is a commuter. It's easy to blame uh, the agency for uh, for their shortcomings. Uh, it, it's, it's important to keep in mind the demands that are being placed on the system without a corresponding increase in the resources to make the system run well. So ridership um, grew dramatically. Um, it dipped a little bit uh, during the recession, but there's still been really strong growth in the use of the system. The population in D.C. has continued to grow. Um, I like to tell people in some senses we, we sort of are loving our transit systems to death. Um, mm-hmm by pushing ridership onto them and then not uh, not funding them in a way that ensures that they operate in the most effective way possible. It is clear the Metro has had its share of hiccups. It is also evident that the issues Metro has been facing are not simply lack of administration. The entire system has not been funded well enough, and DC is so dependent on the trains that what should be small problems have become monstrous. This is a call to the Washington, D.C. Metro. It is a struggle keeping something as large and complex as the transit system free of error. But minor errors should never include fires or unprecedented shutdowns or complete inadequacy of maintenance teams. Work on funding, whether it be donations or making Washington, D.C. a state. Train your workers right and be prepared for the worst. The metro is the transportation symbol of the nation's capital. It deserves recognition. Thank you for listening.